Yes. In this video, what we are going to say is about the concepts of circular cube. Okay. In the previous uh, uh, video, what we have seen is uh, about a cube, which is not a circular. So, for example, what we have seen is of this type of cube. So, your idea, we, we have already seen how to create a queue using arrays. So, this is also the same thing. So, this, let us imagine this as an array. These are all the indexes of this respective positions. Now, here, first initially, front is pointing this and rear is pointing this. So, when you add data, you will be adding at the uh, rear point. So, when I want to add a value 60, then I will go... Uh, increment the rear pointer here and then I'll put the 60 there and so on. So when it reaches uh, uh, this index 7, now we say this is the end of the queue. So you cannot add more because it is uh, rear has reached the end. Likewise, if you want to remove an element, you keep incrementing the front to this and then which means when you increment this, you lose this value because uh, even if it follows an array, you strictly follow the queue concept. So uh, it can be removed. A value can be removed from the front pointer and value can be added to the rear. Now this is a straight array, a linear array, where you can, uh, you keep adding at the rear and you keep removing from the front. Suppose let us imagine this queue. Uh, now let us imagine you are, uh, you are going to remove this value 10. Okay. So when you remove the value 10, what, ha what happens? Here this front pointer is now pointing this. Okay. Now, uh, so this will be the, after removal, your front is pointing here. Now imagine you want to remove 20 also. So now you will remove the front. Now this pointer is now pointing to here. So, which means your front is pointing this. Now, suppose imagine you have already filled this element with 60. You have added element 60, 70 and then 80. So, now the rear is pointing here. Now, after adding these three elements, rear is pointing at the end of the array. Now, here element is removed two elements are there now i want to add another element can i add i cannot add because it has reached the end of the array which means it says that it is a array is full according to our previous q algorithm but actually space is there before this front there are two spaces are there but since i am strictly following i can add only at the end and i can remove only at the front not only that this is a linear array as it reaches the end of the array, that is maximum size, I say the queue is full. Even if space is there, I cannot add. So this is the condition with an ordinary array, a queue. Now, imagine you bring this and joining this index here. Imagine this as a circular queue, like this. So 0 to 7. Imagine after the 7, you can go to 0. In which case, when there is a space here, like this, you can add. So that is the advantage of a circular queue. So in a circular queue, if all the values are over only, it will say that it has a circular, that it is a full, the queue is full. So the circular queue is a linear data structure in which the element, in which the operations are performed based on FIFO, that is first in first order principle, the same principle. And the last question is connected back. That is, the last question is connected back to the first question to make it as a circle. And it is also otherwise called as a ring buffer. In a normal queue, we can insert elements until queue becomes full. But once queue becomes full, we cannot insert the next element, even if there is space in the front of the queue. So let us imagine, let us take some more examples of a circular queue. Imagine at time, or one point, both front and rear are pointing. So first, initially it is empty, after NQ, adding data, front is also pointing same, rear is also pointing the same. So here, now NQ 22, now you are adding, okay? Now adding, rear is updated, so rear moves here, at that point you add this data. 
and so on. N Q 13. Now it becomes real. We come N Q minus 6. Minus 6 is error and real is moved here. Now D Q. You are executing a D Q. So when D Q this element is removed so that the front is moved here. Because the one pointed by the front only will be removed and the front pointer moves here. Now front is pointing this. Then again you are doing a D Q. Now this front becomes here. Now again you are doing an N Q. So here you can insert 9, then NQ20 and so, and NQ5 and so on. So only this condition is said to be a full Q. So uh, like this you can keep on adding. Q operations work as follows. So the two pointers called front and rear are used to keep track of the first and last elements in the Q. That's what we have seen so far. When initializing the Q, we set the value of front and rear to minus 1. So actually index starts from 0. So initially we in order to say that it is Q is empty we always make it as front and rear to minus 1. On entering an element we circularly increase the value of R. That is what we are doing. Index and place the new element in the position pointed by the rear. So when you add you, you add this rear and place the element. You are again move this and add element and so on. That is what explained in this line. On taking an element, we return the value pointed by front and circularly increase the front index. So, which means here we DQ, we DQ, the front is pointing here. See here, front is pointing 40. So, now we remove and then front is pointed to the next element. Again, we DQ, the front is updated. Now, it is moved to the next position. Now, it points to the next element and so on. So, before NQing, NQing is inserted. We have to check whether the queue is full or not. Imagine in this condition, it is already full. Now when you are trying to add, it cannot be done. So in which case, it has to give overflow. So imagine there is no element here. It is completely full. When you are dequeuing, executing a DQ, you have to check whether some elements are there. So in order to do that, you have to check whether it is empty or not. So when entering the first element, we set the value front to 0. And we are taking the last element, we set both the values of rear and uh, front to be minus 1. So, the operations on a circular queue, it is full and uh, empty. So, how do you check? Like normal queue, you cannot do the uh, conditions. So, you have to do adopt some method. Some uh, so, so, what we are doing is, we have to check whether if it is full. This function is used to check whether queue is full. This can be done by checking using this formula. So how do you execute this formula? Let us see that. Let us see this example. This is used for checking is full. Now, uh, let us imagine this is the array and it is full. You have to imagine that 9 is connected with 0. So that is what our circular queue. Now, let us imagine that all the values are, uh, there are uh, values in the queues. So, the queue is full. Now, how do you check? That's what the uh, equation, what we have seen that. That is R plus 1 mod N. N is the size, Q size. Now, here the Q size is 10. 0 to 9, so maximum length size is 10. So, R plus 1. Now, R is pointing. After you add something, R, imagine R is here, 9. So, 9 plus 1, what is that? It is 10. 10 more 10, it is 0. So, now R is equal to F. So, which means F is also 0 and R is also. After doing this, after executing this formula, by what it known? R is also equal to 0. Uh, R and F both are equal to 0. So, what happens that if if rear plus 1 q size if it is equal to front then if the above condition is met then the q is said to be full that is when rear is equal to front this is what the condition is empty this function is used to check whether the q is empty this can be done by checking whether if rear is equal to minus 1 already we have seen in the previous slide both are equal to minus 1 uh, then we, we said in all the elements or there is no element in the uh, Q, then we set both front and rear equal to minus 1. So, when we check this condition, we know that it is empty. So, which means, 
here. Uh, suppose imagine uh, you may have the front here. Okay. Now and rear may be here. R and F. Because of the circular conditions. Okay. Sometimes this may be free. So after uh, inserting, imagine you have this condition. Because of the circular cube, it, it may not be the last position. It may be in the uh, in between. So, for example, uh, after uh, this, let us imagine our R is here. Okay, R is here and front is here. Uh, so, after some in D cube, some elements are removed. Your front is here and uh, imagine your rear is here. Then you keep on adding. Say, so for example, uh, so rear will be updated. So, what will happen? Rear will be uh, become here and you keep on adding. Let us imagine B, C, B, and then here space is there, so you have added. Now rear is here. As I said, it is because of circular cube. After line, again you may be adding because you have to imagine like a circular cube. Since space is there, you keep adding. So now imagine. R is here. Now you are checking. You want to add one more value. So in that case, you will be doing the is full. So what happens here? It is already rear is 4. So 4 plus 1, it is 5. So 5 more 10. When you do 5 more 10, it is nothing but again it is 5 only. The answer is 5. So what happens? Uh, 5 is equal to front. So which means the rear is equal to when you update, when you add, then rear is equal to F. That condition will be reached, which is nothing but again it says it has to be a full. So that is what we have seen here. This is what we have seen here. Now let us see. 